welcome to the Activated Story Theater's 105th podcast. This week's story is The Boy Who Sought the North Wind, a story from Norway. Hi, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And together we are the Activated, activated actors. actors. We're here to activate you. Coming from Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> oh, we should backtrack. We should go back to okay. the beginning of this past month. We've been doing a lot since January, yeah, since our last podcast. We've been doing a lot of sightseeing and thing doing. Yeah, lots and lots and lots. Let's see, since we last left you, I believe we were in South Carolina. We went and did some fun things down in the um, in the Charleston, South Carolina area. Uh, we went around there and had some fun. Well, first of all, we saw the H.L. Hunley, which was a Confederate submarine. You heard that right, Confederate submarine. Yes, this was the first submarine to ever sink a ship in battle, which happened on February 17th which is right around ah, now. Anniversary right about, time. Yeah, right around the time we're recording this, yes. February 17th, 1864, during the Civil War. It had a successful mission, and then it disappeared. Mysteriously. Along, along with the eight men who were aboard. And in 2000, they found it on the ocean floor with the bodies of the eight crew members aboard, and um, now it's on display. But it took a lot of work to find it. They, uh, for years, went hunting for it. It was a big mystery. They had no idea where it went, what happened to it. They didn't know uh, for the longest time. And for one thing, you're, you're talking about a submarine that's basically, oh, like bicycle powered. You have eight men in the sub, and their only job is to propel it. They just, they have to, they have cranks that they do by hand and are squished over in this little tiny... It, it, it's a very small, small it, it was a very space. small sub, four, about four feet wide by four feet high, but a very small for, for eight men to be inside. And I, I think one of the funniest things about it was their only light was a candle. You know, imagine a candle in a submarine. And when the candle went out, they, they knew it was time to get They air. knew that they, they, they were out of running out of oxygen, so they'd surface. Yeah. So it did go down. Not apparently. They really don't know yet why it went down, but um, they it did go down, and they did find it, and now they are restoring it. And so we got to see that. Also in Charleston, we saw the Charleston Tea Plantation, which is the only tea plantation in North America. Yep, the one and only. And I thought maybe it dated back for years and years and years, but. No, it's a rather recent. Uh, I think Lipton started it. In... Well, Lipton Lipton had a research station there right. for growing tea, and then in 1987, I believe it was purchased by a professional tea taster. How's that for for a job? A okay. professional tea yeah. taster. A professional tea taster. I'm like, okay, I could get that job. All I have to do is taste tea, right? Well, I found out that a professional tea taster is actually quite an esteemed title. It is somebody who has studied for four years in England, and they have to pass a test in order to become an official tea taster. They have to pass a test in which they taste tea, a whole bunch of different tea, and they have to be able to tell where the tea comes from, what country, what... Uh, what farm. What farm. Yep, all the way down to what farm and, of course, what variety it is. So my hat is off to a tea tester. Well, then we went on to Atlanta. and Well, first we did the Charleston in Charleston. Well, we did the, we danced the Charleston in Charleston. And, and we have a video of that. I'll put a link up to it so you can watch us dance the Charleston in Charleston and see some of these places that we're talking about. And then, then we went to Atlanta. Atlanta was the home of Margaret Mitchell, who wrote the novel Gone with the Wind. And a lot of it takes place in Atlanta. And we've visited her home, or her home, home she lived in, what used to be her mm -hmm. home. and uh, She was quite a pioneer. Yes. Well, she was a female journalist, which yes. was kind of rare in those days. Very rare in the 20s. Uh, something like that, yeah. And she basically, well, she went in for her first job, and the editor said, um, we don't hire women. He said, well, he said something like, we're, we're not ready for a female journalist. Yeah. 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 So she really had to fight to get where she was and to do what she did. She was a journalist. And then, of course, she, her big claim to fame is, of course, writing Gone with the Wind. We also visited the, the Center for Puppetry Arts in yes. Atlanta. Yes, and we got to see Big Bird and Elmo. They had quite a few of, of uh, Jim Henson's puppets there, the Sesame Street puppets and a lot of other stuff concerning Jim Henson, other, other highlights from his career. And puppets from all over the world. Oh, yeah. Yes, I came away with a whole new appreciation for puppetry because they had so many different puppets from all over the world. There were shadow puppets. Um, there were um, puppets 
that were made out of things you wouldn't think of making puppets out of. And of course, we also saw a puppet performance while we were yes, there. Yes, we did. We did indeed. So that was Atlanta. And, and, and okay, and then what? Whitesburg, Georgia, just <gasps> west of Atlanta. Oh, we Whitesburg. Went zip lining again. Ooh. And we also have a video of our zip lining adventure <laughs> that is up on YouTube as well. I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, zip lining, if you have never been or you don't know what it is, it is so much fun. Uh, you get to jump off of, of cliffs and hang on by a cable and go woo through the treetops. Well, tops. it's actually not usually not a cliff. It's usually a tower. Well, which in our case, okay, but cliff tower. sounds more a dramatic. Tower, well, a tower, a tower. It was kind of on a cliff. Or on, it yes. was just high up on a hill. <laughs> One tower that we jumped off of was 100 feet high. The, it's called the Eagle. The Screaming Eagle. The Screaming Eagle. Yes, oh. and when I say jump off of, of a <laughs> tower, it's perfectly safe. You're in a harness that's attached on, on yeah. a roller to yeah, the yeah, cable. Yeah, 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 yeah. The cable is the, the longest one, the one off the 100 foot tower, was about half a mile long. Mm. And we traveled at speeds of, uh, they said, 70 miles per hour. So, a lot of fun. This is at a place called Banning Mills. Yes. Historic Banning Mills because it used to be a, a mill. It's an incredible location. They, don't, they have zip lining. They have miniature golf. They have spa. They have... Horseback riding. Horseback riding. They have a campground. They have cabins. It's an incredible... I mean, you could spend a month there and still not see everything there is to see. It's, it's a wonderful escape. But, of course, what we liked best about it was the zip lining. <laughs> we do. They have the longest zip lining, the fourth longest zip line in the U.S. That's one zip line. They have the longest zip line and echo tour in the world. Echo Canopy Tour. Which, Echo Canopy Tour. And a canopy tour means you're walking on these little narrow bridges through the treetops. Yep. So you, you don't touch the ground for a while. You get up around these bridges and in, in some cases there's it's nothing more than walking on a cable. It's like walking a tightrope. Yeah. Oh, one, there was one that crossed the river that it was very unnerving. I mm. uh, felt like you're going to fall over at any minute. <laughs> Again, it's all perfectly safe. Yeah, it but, is. But um, if you're a Afraid of heights, like I am, it can be. Uh, you can make it's a your good heart, way to help you get unafraid of heights. <laughs> it can make that heart bump in your chest a little bit. Yeah. Oh, lots of fun though. You do have to be ninety pounds to do the adventure, and so it, um, little kids may not be able to do it. But it, I highly recommend it for teens and adults and anybody over ninety pounds. Um, and it was. Oh, they also have the longest sky bridge in the world. Which goes over the river. Yeah, sky, it's beautiful. Sky Bridge is just what it sounds like. It's a little wooden yeah. bridge that you uh, that it sways. Yeah, it's on <laughs> it's on cable, so it sways, and it's something like six six hundred feet long, I believe. I don't remember. Yeah, six hundred feet long, and it's about a hundred and fifty feet off the ground. I just know oh. we spent like six hours out in the trees, zip lining and walking over these precarious bridges, and I'm ready to go again. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now we are we are in Chattanooga. Yes. And in Chattanooga, we did see the Chattanooga Choo Choo. We did. Which is uh, used to be an old train station, and, and they've converted it into a hotel, but they have a very old train behind it that they call the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Mm -hmm. And we got some pictures of that. And we rode on an incline railway, which goes... Right. Up, a side of a, up the side of a steep it mountain. Goes up the look, it goes up Lookout Mountain. Lookout Mountain. Which is a site of battles and a very good advantage point for uh, during the Civil War where they could look and see, you know, who was going to attack the town and whatnot. They could keep an eye on everything. So it, it goes way up. This railway is incredible. It, it is the steepest incline railway and I think the longest in the nation. It's on a cable and there's two of them and they go, they're both of the inclines are on one cable. Both of the railways are on one cable. So as one goes up, one comes down. And there's only one place they can pass each other. And it is steep. I mean, yeah. if you were walking up that part of the mountain, you'd have to be rappelling. Yeah, you'd have to be on a rope climbing because it's steep. And up on the top of Lookout Mountain also, we saw a couple of other local attractions. Rock City, which is a very famous uh, old attraction. You walk, there are natural pathways, and they've been paved over, but they were natural pathways through the middle of these giant boulders. Yep, and part of it is dedicated to fairyland so, and fairy tales. So yeah. We went through and went, oh, there's Jack and the Beanstalk. And yeah. 
It's a little, you know, campy, they had, but they had little, it's fun. They had little gnomes hidden <laughs> yeah. among the boulders. And the other one was Ruby Falls, which is a cavern, a cave, and it has a waterfall inside it that they call Ruby Falls. Yep. So those are some of the fun things that we have been doing. And and we what? mustn't forget, we mustn't forget, what, what, what? since we're on the road so much, <gasps> this is very important. Oh, we yes. have to see this. Yes. The International Towing and Recovering Museum. Yeah, basically we were driving by and our RV, our motorhome, saw the towing museum and it just slammed on the brakes, did a U-turn and had to go see it and had to go pay homage to it. Because, well, if you've been following our travels at all, you know that tow trucks have saved us many, many times. And we are very thankful to uh, tow trucks and, and tow truck uh, drivers. And the reason that this museum is here is this is where the tow truck was actually invented. Yes. Back in 1917, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And the, I'll go with that. the fellow who invented it was a local. He was from Chattanooga. And so they uh, started this museum with a lot of old tow, tow trucks from all over the country. And basically it's an international museum, so they could get some from the rest of the world. But right now, I think they're all American I, trucks. I think it's international because I think it's the only tow truck museum in the world yeah so i think that's what they call it, international too but um yeah basically holmes invented it it was named uh ernest was? holmes ernest holmes ernest holmes invented yeah. the tow truck because his car got stuck down the side of a bank one day and he didn't want to wait another eight hours to have it towed out or to have it pulled out to save it so he decided, hmm, there's got to be a better way to do this. And he invented the tow truck. I guess that brings us up to date. Yes. So far, <laughs> we are going to see another cave. Yeah. So we've got more adventures ahead. And we have a story coming up for you, of course, this time around. We're going to be doing a story that has a little to do with weather. As I know that everybody's been having, well, some rather unique and interesting weather this past month, right? This past couple, this past winter has been... I, I've had weather. I've had weather. Yes. But I th there seems to have been some intense I've, weather. More intense, I think, this year than... There's been weather everywhere. Yeah, yes. well, m more storms, more <laughs> cold, and in places that don't usually get cold. I know, you know, they've, they have extended... I know there's a school in New Jersey that has had so many winter days, so many cancellations of school days, that they have had school on Saturday. Oh. Yeah, so <laughs> we know people have had a lot of weather lately. All right, so let's get to our story this week. All right, and this story comes from Norway. It is The Boy Who Sought the North Wind. Once upon a time, there was a boy who lived with his mother, and they were very poor, as most boys who live with their mother in fairy tales are. <coughs> she was also sick. <coughs> Jack, would you bring me some food? Okay, Mom. Uh, all we have is some grain. Uh, I can I can grind it up to make some flour. It, just give me a, about ten minutes, okay? Uh, okay, go, go out to the barn and get it. All right. Whoo, it's cold out here. And windy. Oh, hey! The wind! It, it blew my grain away! It's going against the grain! Ah! Uh, Ah, uh, come back here! Bring my grain back! Oh, Mom, I just came back in, by the way, in case you didn't hear the door open and close. Mom, you won't believe this, but the wind blew away all the grain. Oh, dear. What are we going to do? That's all we have to eat. But don't worry, Ma. We're Norwegian. That means I'm descended from Vikings, and I'm tough. I'll go track down that north wind, and I'll get our grain back. Oh, you go, Jack. So Jack took off on a mighty journey, seeking the North Wind. And at long last, he found the North Wind's cave. Hello! Oh, 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 oh! Anybody here? Here, 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 here! Hello? Somebody come to visit me? <laughs> oh, there you are! You're the one who took my grain! Give me back my grain before I give you a migraine! What? I, I did? Yes. That's all we had to eat. Give it back to me. My mother is sick. She needs food. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, I'd give it back to you if I could, but oh, I'm just afraid it's it's all gone. Hmm. Oh, I know. I've got an idea. Here, I'll give you this tablecloth. 
Oh yeah, that's a lot of good when I have nothing to put on it. Oh now, don't you worry. It's not just an ordinary tablecloth. It's a magic tablecloth. Why, when you unfold it, it will have food on it. All the food you can eat. Oh, you'll be happy now. <laughs> Thanks for coming to visit me. Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> okay, yeah, I guess maybe I can sell this or something. All right, I'll see you later. Oh, boy. Oh, it's so cold out here and dark. It's, it's very nightish. I need to find some place to spend the night. Then I can go home in the morning. Oh, an inn. I'm in luck. I'll go in the inn. Yeah, what do you want? I, uh, I want a room for the night. You do, do you? Well, all right. You have to give me two bucks. Two bucks? Uh, uh, okay, I'll give you my last two bucks. Here you go. All right, but that's not enough to buy you any food. Do you have any more money? Uh, that's okay. I don't need food. I've got this tablecloth. Hmm. Right. Ah, yeah, let's see how this works. Ah, spread it out. Food, give me food. Oh, look at that. Baked tofu. Mmm, mm, mm. mm, yum. This is delicious. I'm ready to go to bed now. Ah. Huh. What was that that I saw? Magic tablecloth. <laughs> well, I'll just swap it. For this one! <laughs> You'll never know the difference. Oh, I'm gonna eat all the food I want. <laughs> oh, it's now the next morning. Uh, uh, I'm feeling so much better. Okay, tablecloth, let's go home. And so Jack made his way back home with what he thought was the magic tablecloth. Yo, Mom, I'm home! <coughs> Yo, Jack, you're back. Uh, here. Are you hungry still? Oh, I am starving, Jack. Oh, good, good. Uh, I mean, uh, look. Let me spread out this tablecloth. Now watch this. Yes? Food, tablecloth, food. Uh, Jack? Uh, yeah, uh... I, I, I don't see anything. Food, tablecloth, food! But it, it, it worked before. Oh, Jack. What am I gonna do with you? Um... We don't have a cow we could trade for some beans or something, do we? Oh, I wish that we did. Well, okay, look, no, no sweat. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll run back to see the north wind again, and I'll trade this tablecloth for something that'll really work. I just, just stay tight, and I'll be right back. And so, Jack made his way back to the cave of the north wind. yo Mr. Wind! Oh, oh, you came back to see me. Yeah, you, you know, this tablecloth yeah. you gave it to me and you said it would produce food. I, I, I think you were full of hot air. Well, I did it once, but then after that it, it ran out, you know. It, it's, it needs a refill. Oh, I don't understand what went wrong. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Here, I'll give you this sheep. <laughs> it's a magic sheep. Why? It'll give you money whenever you ask for it. Uh, all right. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Wind. Oh, thanks for coming to visit me. Yeah, this has a money-back guarantee, doesn't it? And so Jack made his way back. But again, it was night. And he was afraid he wouldn't make it all the way back home in time. So he stopped at the inn. Uh, you ho Have a room for the night? Oh, yes, I do. But the rate's gone up. It is now... Five bucks. Five bucks? Uh, okay. Uh, here, uh, uh, here, sheep. Uh, give me some money. <laughs> there you go. Five bucks. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. The room's right over there. And so Jack lay down and got some shut eye. <laughs> that magic sheep I saw. Give him the money. Oh! <laughs> there it is. I'll just swap it for this sheep. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna be rich. <laughs> and the next morning... Uh, okay, you. Let's go. My mom is waiting. Yoo-hoo, Mom. I'm home. 
Oh, Jack, you're back. Look what I brought. What is that? A sheep? Oh, good, I'm so hungry. Oh, yeah, okay, well, watch this. Mm -hmm. uh, sheep, give me some money. Uh, sheep, give me some money. <laughs> oh, Jack. Um, uh, uh, all right, um, look, I, I'll, I'll take this back and swap it for something else. Oh, uh, how about just getting the grain back so we can eat again? Oh, okay, I, I'll, I'll try. And so Jack made his way back to the cave of the North Wind. Oh, uh, Mr. North Wind! Oh, Jack, my buddy! <laughs> it's so good to see you. Yeah, right, look, you took our grain, you gave me the tablecloth that, that ran out of food, and then you gave me a sheep that ran out of money. Come on, we're starving here. The sheep ran, ran out of money? Yes. That's not supposed to be. I don't understand what's going on. It's planned obsolescence. It happens these days. Huh. Wow. I'd really just give you the grain back if I could. Oh, there's got to be some way to make amends. Hmm. Oh, I know. Well... It's all I have to offer you, but I guess I'll have to do it. All, all right, here, take this stick. It's a magic stick. Now, it's going to whack your enemy. I don't have any enemies. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all I can do. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, see you later. I hope not. <clears throat> and so Jack made his way back home. Oh, oh, I got an early start this time. Maybe I won't have to stop at that silly inn. Uh, you! Uh, d don't you want a place to stay tonight? Oh, no, I, I can't. I have no money. I have to keep going. What's that um stick you have there? Oh, it, it's just a silly magic stick, that's all. Magic, huh? Well, uh, I tell you what. I'm, I have an extra room available tonight, and you've just been such a good customer. Why don't you take it uh, on the house? Really? Oh, why not? Well, that's very generous of you. Well, then, just tuck yourself in there and have a good rest. Okay, I'll just put this stick here and oh, go to sleep. Oh, um, um. <laughs> a magic stick. I'll just swap it for this one. <laughs> You'll never know the difference. Ow! Oh! Oh! oh. What, what, what? What's going on? <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Oh! Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh, make it stop! Make Make it Boy, stop! But it, the wind said it would attack my mm. enemy. Ouch! Are you my enemy? Ah, God, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Ow! Ooh, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I took the shape and... <gasps> ow, 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 I took the, um, the tablecloth. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here, I'll get... You can have him back. You can have him back. Just make uh -huh. it stop. Make it stop. All right. Come on, stick. Come on, tablecloth. Come on, sheep. Let's get out of here and get back home. <sighs> so Jack made his way back home, and he and his mother lived happily ever after. And that's the story of The Boy Who Sought the North Wind from Norway. In our Laugh and Learn ledger, there's a whole bunch of information about weather and folk tales. Um, again, I'll put a link to the Laugh and Learn ledger in the show notes. That's a sort of monthly newsletter that we put out. It's an information newsletter that is um, addressed to teachers and parents and audience members it has some fun activities and some interesting tidbits and information about folk tales and okay information that you can't get anywhere else yes it'll make you laugh and learn and we're getting ready to head out to nashville nashville tennessee we're going to do some shows out that way and then we will be on our way to uh san to We'll be on our way to San Jose. We actually will be on our way to San Jose. We'll be doing some doing some shows in California coming up in April. Um, but before that, Zephyr, alias Captain Jack Sparrow, has some shows coming up in Massachusetts and Connecticut. On the 23rd of this month, you can catch him at Turner Free Library in Randolph, Massachusetts. And he will be appearing there, leading some treasure hunts and reading some pirate stories as Captain Jack Sparrow. So if you want, catch him over there. And then he'll be in Clinton, Connecticut on March 26th. Then we are heading to California. Uh, we'll be celebrating National Library Week out there with some programs at libraries. 
beginning a little early on April 7th at the Tiburon Library. Then we'll be at a bunch of Sacramento County libraries from April 12th through April 21st. You can catch us at about five or six of those libraries. And on April 19th, we will be appearing at the Fairfield Library. That'll be the Fairfield Cordelia Library on April 19th. So be watching for us in Northern California. Also some school programs out that way too. Well, thanks for joining us and we hope that you stay activated. And we'll see you next time. Activated Story Theater is committed to bringing fun educational shows to schools and libraries nationwide. On stage, we use physical comedy, American Sign Language, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring multicultural folk tales to life. For booking information, check out our website, activatedstorytheater.com, where you can also find out when the activated actors will be performing near you. Read a story or order one of our audio CDs. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or listen on Stitcher. We look forward to your comments and folktale suggestions. Stay activated. Until next time.